the final week of the regular season is where two rivals collide. Michigan, Michigan State have one last chance to build momentum toward next weekend's Big Ten Championships and one more chance to make a statement. We bring it to you live. Women's Gymnastics next on BTN. March Madness is creeping up on the world of women's gymnastics as well. And welcome into Ann Arbor. And welcome inside Cliff Keen Arena. Women's gymnastics hasn't been here in the last nine years. But we welcome in an old rivalry, the Spartans in town, to take on the Michigan Wolverines. Welcome in, everyone. Happy to have you with us. Lisa Byington alongside the former Wolverine All-American, Kylie Kaloric. And when you competed here, you were Kylie Botterman. Tell me what this rivalry meant to you. It was a fun one. I knew a lot of the girls on Michigan State's team. Michigan State knew a lot of the Michigan girls, so it was a fun, friendly rivalry. Let's start with the Spartans. Michigan State is kind of on a hot streak here, recording scores in the 195s the last few weeks. They're doing very well, putting up some good scores this year. Leading them, sophomore Danny Levy is going to be doing the all-around tonight. A very experienced sophomore. She will do all four events and might not be the best on any given event, but all around a consistent athlete. Jackie Berg, a senior, very experienced, only doing three events tonight. Bars, most likely her specialty event, but coach says to watch for on floor as well. We will do exactly that. And watching the Michigan Wolverines, they have a lot to compete for this weekend. Trying to finish in the, one of the top four spots for Big Ten Championships next weekend. They have a certain score in mind that they want to obtain. Everybody needs to be on their game tonight. Um, leading their way, two all-arounders, neither of them seniors, junior Katie Zorales, captain, all-American on the vault, dynamic, very graceful gymnast, specialty I would say is beam to watch for her. Joanna Sampson, only a sophomore, didn't compete the all-around last season, but stepped into the role this year and is doing phenomenal, very powerful gymnast. I'm excited to watch both of them. We're excited to get this started and Michigan will bring five all-arounders to compete here tonight. We got the first rotation coming up. Nice view of Central Campus, and oh, it's so nice to see green grass in March. Series history here between Michigan and Michigan State. Michigan has won the last 12 series matchups. And take a look at the Big Ten standings, and if the Big Ten championships were to begin tonight, those would be the two sessions, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Clearly, you want to be in the one in the evening. That means you're one of the top four teams in the conference. Take a look at the Wolverine head coach, Bev Blocky, her 22nd year. She's nearing 600 wins at 579 going into tonight. Take a look at her vault lineup as well. She has had probably one of the most difficult seasons of her coaching career dealing with injuries. We'll get into that a little bit later. Kathy Clegas brings her team also in her 22nd year in East Lansing. She has had a winning record 20 of her 21 seasons, a three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. You take a look at the Spartans lineup there on the bars. So a rivalry awaits, and so does our first rotation. Rima Zachariah will get things started here for Michigan, just a sophomore. Rima's gonna start with a Front handspring, pike front, nails it. Awesome first vault. She can actually do a half twist on that vault. I think you can tell how good it is by the sound of the cheer, and Michigan was cheering loud. They were, they liked it. There's her pike front, her feet don't move. <laughs> and the head coach liked Reaction. it too, I think. Always good when you get a smile out of the head coach. Over to bars now, Michigan State gets things started with Selena Rodriguez, a senior, tied for third last weekend on this event over in Alaska. The only event she'll be competing tonight. Selena is a bar specialist. Blind full pirouette to a blind half. 
Nice straddle back to handstand with immediate toe shoot to the high bar. And she gears up for her dismount, double layout. A little hot, but a great leadoff routine for Michigan State. Again, for the viewers, how much do you deduct for a little hop like that? I would say about a tenth hop she took. Take a look at the dismount. You can see a nice tap under the bar. Let's go at the right time. And just comes out a little bit early. So Rodriguez will wait on her score. Stephanie Colbert next up for Michigan. Her teammate before her, Rima Zachariah, recording a 9-7 on the vault. Stephanie does a nice Yurchenko full. Nice height. <laughs> a little hop on that, but beautiful vault for Stephanie. See a little leg separation in the air. Could have controlled the landing a little bit better, but all in all, great vault. Michigan coming out solidly here with their first two gymnasts on the vault. We go back to the bars. Tara Neal, a red shirt sophomore. Rodriguez recording a 9.75 before her. Tara starts off on the high bar. Goes blindfold pirouette into a sky high Takachi, immediate overshoot. She has a cool dismount here. She went free hit oh, wow. to a toe front half. <laughs> Don't see that very often. Just the eyeball test, I would say that looked pretty cool. You see the free hip to handstand has to split those legs early in order to get her toes on the bar. And that's a front half in the air. Wow, athletic dismount. Tara Neal, a redshirt sophomore, will go into her story a little bit as the night goes on, battling injuries, competing in three events this year. Back over to the vault. And Net Mealy, a freshman here for Michigan. This is the first time she's competing this vault in competition, Lisa. She used to do a full and a half twist with her Yurchenko. She's downgrading a little bit, only doing a Yurchenko full. And she nails it. So Michigan, three gymnasts up. Three solid performances here on the vault. Stephanie Colbert before her recording a 9.75, but take a look at Mealy. She gets her hands to the table very well. Nice block and just a tiny hop on the dismount. I would say that was a great first time vault for Annette. She gets a great from one of the vaulting greats, Kylie Kaloric. Tara Neal recording a 9.75 on the bars. Here is Alina Cartwright, a freshman from Michigan State. Alina struggled a little bit last weekend in Alaska but has a very difficult routine. Starts off with a toe on shaposh. Fail handstand. Executing everything very well. Toe on to handstand and goes into a double tuck. Dismount, beautiful routine. A pair of 9.75 so far on this event for Michigan State. Alina Cartwright will wait on her score. We see the double tuck dismount. Over does the flip a little bit. She has her shoulders behind her when she lands. Team liked it. <laughs> I love the reactions. Going back to the vault for Michigan, Katie Zorales, a junior. We talked about her in the open and one of the positive stories here for Michigan and a breakout story here for the Wolverines. Katie's an All-American on this event. She made event finals last year, so very experienced. Actually went 9925 last weekend. Just a huge dynamic vault from Katie. She gets so high in the air, she gets nice distance off the table and just knows how to open up at the right time. You can see why she's a first team All-American on this event. Nice height, uses her arms to twist her around and she's happy. You think she's determined? I do. 
That's determination right there. Absolutely. Her teammate, too, Annette Mealy, recording a 9.75 as Zoralis will wait for her score. Danny Levy, the only all arounder, Michigan State, will bring to the table here tonight. A steady performer, Kathy Clegas says. She did win the all round in Alaska last weekend. Her teammate, Alina Cartwright, recording a 9.55. Danny's going to start off with a line to a Pike Yeager, a little bit close to the bar you saw there. Line change to a Pike straddleback. She has a very difficult dismount coming up. Nice Giants tap into a tuck full out dismount. She took a, a larger step there at the end. What will that cost her? Everything's about around a tenth about in around. gymnastics. <laughs> Here's the blind into the straddle back. And we see her dismount here, tuck full out. Chest is a little bit down, causing her to take that big step, but they'll also deduct her on her release move because she was so close to the bar, she had to bend her elbows when she caught. Joanna Sampson next for Michigan. Katie Zorales recording a 9.875 before her. Joanna won vault last weekend with teammate Katie. That was just before her. Beautiful full. She goes for the stick and almost opens up a little bit too early. How can you tell she goes for the stick? She opens up. You can see when a gymnast flares out like that. We'll see here. Beautiful straight body opens up her body, but just a slight second too early. Her chest is down on the landing, and she has to take that step forward. It's a very nice body position in the air, but it's going to cost her on the landing. Joanna Sampson will wait for her score. Meanwhile, Danny Levy recording a 9-6 on the bars. Deneen Haba, take a look at her dismount. Because why? Because it's named after her last name. It's called the Haba, a D skill, her coach says. It's a very unique dismount. You'll see it coming up here. She starts with an upright half to a pack salto a little bit close to the bar and has to take an extra free hip there on the low bar. Here we'll see her dismount. It's actually a Komenich with an extra half twist. Struggled a little, a little bit in that routine but figured out how to work through it and didn't have to get off the bar, which is a plus. Here's the pack. You see her hips come to the bar. She's just supposed to do a kip out of that and ends up having to take an extra circle. And here's that dismount. Extra half twist. Does it, overdoes it a little bit. Doesn't look that happy, but didn't have to count a fall at least. Deneen Haba waiting on her score. Sachi. Sujiyama, a freshman. Very impactful this year. All around her in every meet here from Michigan, the Wolverines have needed her to contribute. They're only competing seven athletes here tonight because of injuries. She's been doing her job. She's been putting up the numbers they need. This vault's a little bit more difficult. She adds the half twist. It's a full and a half Yurchenko. Fell last weekend and nailed it this weekend. So Michigan starting strong, ending strong here on the vault. The freshman coming through in the anchor spot. Here we see she gets a nice block off the table. It rises and she's patient with it. She knows where she is on the landing and just has to take that little hop to control it. Nice vault rotation for Michigan. Meanwhile, Deneen Haba knew that she struggled on the bars. She recorded a 9-2-5 as Jackie Berg will wrap things up here for Michigan State, one of those seniors on the Spartan team. Anchoring the bar lineup, Jackie puts up big scores on this event. My hometown friend, we both went to the same club. <laughs> That's right, you guys are buddies. We did, United Gymnastics. 
Nice Pike Jaeger to an immediate overshoot from Jackie. Nice handstands. And she's going to end with a beautiful double layout dismount. Slight hop backwards on the landing, but a great recovery routine from the last. Has the highest RQS on the team in this event. Take a look at her dismount. Nice tap, beautiful form. She's very arched in the air. Judges like that, very pretty to the eye. Michigan State has one exhibition routine here on the bars. I want to mention the reason why we're in Cliff Keen Arena. We're all kind of tucked in here nice and cozy and warm here. It's because there's some renovation that's being completed here at the Chrysler Center. Normally this meet would take place over there, but here we are, nice and cozy. The place is pretty packed here. It's a full 9 8 0 for Jackie Bird, which you mentioned here on the bars. And Sujiyama recording a 9 8 5 on the vault. It's an exhibition routine from Ellie. She just did a toe up. Starts with a blindfold to Kachif. Very nice. Does a blind half. Almost goes over the bar to an overshoot. She's continuing the momentum, doing a good job, and ends with a double layout dismount. So the exhibition routine, a pretty good one here for Michigan State. We go back and look at Gosselin's dismount. Double layout, nice straight body in the air, almost sticks it, knows exactly where she is, but takes that small hop. So first rotations in the book. That means rotation number two is coming up. No switch. Michigan State to the vault, Michigan to the bars in a matter of moments next. BTN goes where you want it, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. You can watch live games and original programming on, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You need the right cable, satellite, or participating video provider to do it. To learn more, visit btn2go.com, also available in the App Store. In between rotations here, head coach for the Michigan State Spartans, Kathy Clegas, generous enough to join us. And coach, you hit all your routines on that first rotation, no falls. Give me one thing that stood out to you watching your girls. Well, um, as a gymnastics coach, looking at that, that wasn't a very good uh, set of bar routines. We missed some elements and we had a, a, a error out of a pack salto. And so our scores were not what we're uh, capable of doing. So I'm a little disappointed. Looking ahead, what do you need to accomplish here on vault and the rest of the night for tonight's meet to be a successful one with big tens in mind next weekend? Oh, I think that we need to really focus on some good landings on vault and I think just hitting our routines and doing what we're capable of doing. That's what, you know, all you can ask for as a coach and that's what I'm disappointed with on bars, but know that we're capable of doing it on the next three events. All right, coach, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Here are your vault results for Michigan. Katie Zorales leading the way here for the Wolverines. She had an awesome vault. She's an All-American, the experienced senior. Junior, I'm sorry. And she deserved that 9875. Competes like a senior, but only a junior. That's good news here for Michigan. And this is how Michigan State met on the bars. You heard the head coach. She was disappointed with those scores. She was. They missed a few elements, struggled a little bit in a couple of their routines, but they didn't have to count that 925. So that's a good thing going forward. In our second rotation, they'll switch spots as we look at the team totals there after one rotation. Michigan State, the head coach not happy, but leading the way here so far early. I'm sorry, I glanced at that. I can do my math. I was never a math major. <laughs> Michigan leading the way after the first rotation. A nine is greater than an eight, Kylie. It is, 49.075, great score for Michigan on ball. So we'll switch events here. Michigan State to the vaults, Michigan on the bars. What are you looking forward to seeing here in this rotation, Kylie? Shelby Geis, only a sophomore, really stands out to me on bars. She has really pretty lines, 
very pretty gymnast to watch on bars as well as beam, but we'll get to that soon. Well, you had competed in this rivalry. You talked about how sometimes it's a friendly rivalry. We actually asked two competitors who are still competing in this, what does Michigan, Michigan State mean to you? It's just about both teams being really competitive, and right now we're the closest rank we've ever been, so it's, it's really exciting for us. It's a big rivalry, and I think the team is really excited to have our final meet against them and to be competing here in Cliff Keen, too. It's going to be fun because hopefully we'll be able to pack the house tonight. So it's a fun rivalry. There's your buddy, Jackie Burr. You guys talked during this week at all? We did. She, uh, she Facebooked me last <laughs> week and said we were looking forward to seeing each other. So... I'm happy That's to... the way of communicating <laughs> now, isn't it? She Facebooked me. <laughs> Michigan State will kick things off here. Danny Levy, a sophomore. Her coach says things just don't bother her at all. And we'll take a look at the lineup for Michigan on the bars, led by Katie Zorales. Tell me why she is a breakout gymnast this year. She's had a lot of injuries in her career so far. Last summer just had a hip and a shoulder surgery in one summer. But coming back, doing all around for the first time this season, she's really come into that role and figured out how to deal with it and is doing awesome this year. Lots of surgeries here this summer. Coming off just her second all around win of her career against Georgia, which I thought was kind of amazing. Big picture, let's go back to our standings here, ranked by the RQS by each team there. Now Michigan and Minnesota kind of competing this weekend for that fourth spot that would put either team there in the session two in the evening sessions next weekend in Iowa. It's always better to be in the evening session. Scores tend to go up throughout the day, so Michigan's really trying to get the highest score they can today to beat out Minnesota for that fourth spot. And Mi Michigan competing here tonight, but Minnesota and Iowa actually over in Denver. So with the time change and everything like that, Michigan really won't know its fate until late Saturday, maybe even early Sunday. It's gonna be an antsy weekend waiting around for some scores to come in. And it's a, a different situation that Coach Blocky and, and the Wolverines find themselves in. I mentioned that they only bring seven athletes here tonight because, because of injuries. It has set them back. But when we spoke to her this week, she said, look, we haven't given up on playing or uh, competing in that evening session. Even with all the struggles that we've had this year, we still feel like we can put up the numbers and put up the scores. And we haven't given up. we got one more weekend to do it. Exactly. They have a lot of talent on this team still, even without big names like Brittany Martinez and Natalie Bielstein. But they haven't given up hope, and they're giving it their all this weekend. And going into next weekend, they know what they need to do to win a Big Ten championship. I love when Michigan was warming up. You said, hey, there's an ACL, there's the ankle, there's the Achilles. It was all kind of surrounding us. Now we're ready to get things started here in the second rotation. Danny Levy going to start things off here for the Spartans. The only all-arounder recording the 9-6 on the bars. Here she is on the vault. Danny's going to start off the lineup with the Yurchenko full. Very focused. Nice vault. She twists a little bit early, I see there and lands with her chest down a little bit, but she has nice height in the air. At what point did she twist early? You'll see right after her hands touch, she's almost already twisting in the air. A lot of girls try to lay out first and set before they twist, and her hands come right off the table right there, come down to her side and start her twist. Over to bars, Katie Zorales. A solid nine, eight, seven, five. Katie has a short routine, but very dynamic. She was actually supposed to connect that, the blindfold into the release move, that's a Delchev, and had to take an extra giant. So that might cost her, but she figured out how to keep flowing her routine. 
ends with a nice double layout. Stuck dismount. Maybe the judges won't notice that little mistake in the middle. How hard is that to kind of regain composure and regain control of your routine? At first, you're thinking in your head, oh, shoot, I messed up. But then you have to figure it out. You have to think fast. And here we see her dismount. It was a good one. Nice tap, nice body position. Good routine for Katie Zarellis. So she'll wait on her score. Lena Cartwright, a freshman next up for Michigan State. Her teammate, Danny Levy, recording a 9-7 on the vault just before her. Alina also does a Yurchenko full. Battling some ankle issues, if I understand correctly. She has a bunch of mats there that almost needed to be pushed back a little bit so she could have she stayed almost, on them. She's gonna fell off the mat there. A lot of distance on that vault. It's a big vault, big block, nice body position. Almost if those mats were a foot or two back, she would have stayed on and wouldn't have had to take that yeah, extra step. It's kind of what it looked like. So Cartwright will wait on her score. Katie Zorales on the bars recording a 9-7. Her teammate Annette Mealy up next. Michigan only put up five girls last weekend on this event. Annette starts off with a nice line full into a Takachev. Giant into a fail handstand. Nice handstands from Annette. And it's going to end with a double layout dismount. A little bit bigger hop than she wanted on that dismount, but all in all, great routine. Here's her release move. Gets her heels down and grabs for that bar on the Takachev. Goes into her dismount here. She has to hop back there. Shoulders are behind her and couldn't stick the landing. Neely, one of those athletes competing in the all around because of injuries. We head back to the vault. Deneen Haba, a senior. Her teammate, Alina Cartwright, recording a 9675. Haba had a career high last weekend in this event against Alaska. Struggled a little bit on bars, hopefully can regroup herself and put up a good score here for the Spartans on vault. Layout half, almost sticks it, just has to barely move that one foot there. But a nice vault. What'd you like about it? She twists very late. She almost completes the layout before she twists, which almost makes it harder to find the landing. You don't have as much time to get your eyes on the floor, but almost completes the layout, does the half, and knows where she is. So a 9-7, a 9-6-7-5 for Michigan State so far on that event. Sachi Sugiyama, a freshman. One of the five all-arounders here for the Wolverines, her teammate Annette Mealy recording a 9-7 on this event. Sachi starts off with a blindfold pirouette into a ganger, very close on that release move, almost bites the bar. What does that mean, bites the bar? She was very close. She had to bend her elbows. Her, I meant that her mouth was very close to the bar <laughs> when she caught. But finishes with a nice pack salto, and here goes her dismount. She does a tuck full out. Wow. That makes up for wow. it a little bit. A thunderous landing here at Cliff Keen Arena. Let's gonna see if how close we can see maybe with this shot. That's the pirouette into the... Oh! <laughs> I think she hit the bar. That's what I meant. She was very <laughs> close. You want to be a little bit more stretched out. Here we see her dismount. 
Nice tap into the tuck fold. Toes are pointed, knees are together. No deduction on that dismount whatsoever. I don't think they have a dentist on this team. I know they have <laughs> athletic trainers here for the Wolverines. Deneen Hama reporting a 9725. Alyssa Brennan next up for Michigan State. Alyssa does a your chankle full here as well. Beautiful landing. A little bit leg separation on the entry to the vault, which we'll see. But knows where she is in the landing. Brennan, one of four seniors here. An interesting approach to the vault, Kylie. Everyone has their own techniques that they use, if that helps. You see a little leg separation before her hands get to the table that she'll be deducted on. Right there. But great landing, very small deduction on the landing. And that's what the judges judge on. Sugiyama recording a 9.75 before Joanna Sampson, who's up next. She had a career best in this event early February, competing against West Virginia. Holds that first handstand there. Nice Takacha from Joanna. Fail handstand, nails the hand, she's really hitting these handstands here. And ends with a very difficult dismount. Wow! She tricked me. She's been doing a full in that <laughs> double layout. I thought she was doing the layout full out, but that was a clean double layout. Very nice routine for Joanna. And how about the height here? Very nice height on the Tkachev. Straight legs, pointed toes. And here we see the dismount. She did trick me. She tricked double, you. La <laughs> double layout, very clean. Definitely easier than the one that she's capable of doing, but if you can nail it like that, why bother? All right, Ashley Noel up next for Michigan State. Setting a new career high last weekend on this event. Her teammate, Alyssa Brennan, recording a 9-8. Ankle full, lands a little bit short, but everything besides that looked very clean to me. No obvious deductions. Gets off of her hands nicely on the round off. Nice height, not as much distance as you would like, and has to take that hop forwards, which makes her even closer to the vault. How could she get that distance? Using your set, using your hands off of the table can really make you go higher and farther from the table. Shelby Geis of Michigan next up. One of two events here for Geis. Her teammate Joanna Sampson recording a 985. Has really nice lines on this event. Nice Takacha from Shelby. She's a very good pirouetter. Has nice lines in her pirouette. Shelby ends with a double tuck. She also has been working on upgrading a dismount, but when you can nail a double tuck every time, like she just did. Michigan has come to compete on this event. And that's five solid routines for Michigan. Geis' release move. Beautiful Takacha, wow. beautiful toe point. And her dismount. She didn't trick you on this one. She did it. Nice double tuck <laughs> for Shelby. The sixth spot would usually be Brittany Martinez. She's an All-American on bar, so they're they're wishing she was not injured and able to compete. Tara Neal is the anchor for the Spartans. Her teammate Ashley Noll recording a 9725. She has the highest RQS on the team in this event. She's sixth in the Big Ten right now on this event. Huge vault. So high, so far, beautiful body position, and just totally flares that pole. She has a straight body in the air, and as soon as she finishes the twist, she almost arches in the air, which the judges really like. 
Straight body arches, opens her arms up, and nails the landing. Tara Neal, athletic, powerful. The bars are done for Michigan. The Wolverines have scratched Stephanie Colbert. What did the head coach see in, in their performance in that rotation to make that decision? They put up five good scores. There were five girls, nailed their routines. They didn't need the extra person. Maybe she was just kind of the backup. If somebody had a mistake, she was there to fill in. Tara Neal recording the highest score so far here tonight, a 9925. Here is the exhibition. We'll also see her on the floor. Jillian Carr here for Michigan State. Jillian does a tight front, a little different than the vaults we've been seeing, but sky high and looks like she's been doing it forever. <laughs> well, she gets a rep here. The entry is a little different. You have to get your hands on the table faster to pop you off the table. So Jillian Carr completing her exhibition routine for her team. And we're down two rotations halfway through. We got two more rotations to go and see the new apparatus. Floor and beam coming up. Next weekend's gonna be fun. Join us on Saturday, the 2012 Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. We'll be live from Iowa City with two shows at 2 p.m. with the first session, 7 p.m. for session number two. All next, Saturday, March 24th, and it's live, both sessions only on BTN. Here are your results here first. The vaults for Michigan State. The head coach was not happy with the first rotation. What about the second, Coach Caloric? I think she's going to be pretty happy with these results. Tara going 9-9-2-5. That's a huge score for the team. They and looked we, great. We have not seen a score that high yet here tonight. Here's the bar results for Michigan. The Wolverines only sent five gymnasts to the bar. They scratched Stephanie Colbert. and. Bev Plocky told us earlier this week that that's not Colbert's strongest event. They put her in the sixth spot, hoping the five gymnasts would hit their routines. That's what happened here for the Wolverines. They were prepared for it. And here is your updated team numbers. I can see clearly now that Michigan is still in the lead. Learned my numbers after two rotations. <laughs> Michigan 97-9, they're doing well. They're putting up good scores right now. We talk about BTN to go, but I mean, that's um, go blue to go. Wouldn't you say? It's an iPad. <laughs> that's, that's pretty creative with the iPad for the youngster. And of course, it's a youngster who's using it, right? This place is, is packed here at Cliff Keen Arena, and they are fired up. It's a nice venue. It's, it's a smaller venue than Chrysler Center, but you were saying it, it almost creates a, a nice atmosphere because it is packed. We're all tight, you know, caught up in here real cozy and tight and close, and we're all friends, right? I think it's more fun. Chrysler, I mean, I love competing in Chrysler Arena. It's a great arena to be in. But these fans right now, with everyone so close to us, it makes it more fun. This is how, this is how cozy we are. <laughs> they stuck us in the corner. We're in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had more pull here than that. Sorry. Kylie? I'm sorry. Maybe if we were at Chrysler. <laughs> <laughs> the all-around competition here after two rotations. The top three here. Three Wolverines. Michigan sending five all-arounders, competing with five all-arounders. Michigan's lineup here on the beam for this third rotation. Tell me who you're looking forward to see. I said Shelby for bars, but I'm going to say, say it again. She has beautiful lines. She's upgraded her routine from last year, and she's just really fun to watch. Katie as, as well. She's a junior. Beam's definitely her specialty event. Michigan State to the floor. I'm excited to see Danny Levy compete. I hear there's some country music coming. There is, and some big tumbling from Danny. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got to mix and match the music to the personalities. We'll see her in the anchor spot. 
for Michigan State on the floor. But Shelby Geis will get things started here on the beam for Michigan. Like I said, Shelby, Shelby has upgraded her routine from last year. You'll see her start her flight series last year did that front aerial just into a back handspring. And this year added the back handspring layout step out and nailed it beautifully right there. She struggled a little bit in warm ups. Bev said, hey, take a deep breath, figure it out. You can do this. You've done it a million times. And she did. Guys, last year as a freshman tied her season high on this event at the Super Six. She has some postseason experience to her name as a sophomore. She does. She competes like she has a lot of experience. Just looks very poised up there. And leading off the beam event isn't an easy task. Ends here with a cartwheel to a full and a half. Stuck dismount. Awesome routine for Shelby. I'm happy for it. She could not wait to get to her teammates and high five. It's amazing what they can do on four inches of wood. That's her difficult series, the back handspring layout step out. And her cartwheel, full and a half, doesn't move her feet one bit. <laughs> she <laughs> knew it, she couldn't wait. Let me celebrate. Jillian Carr, we saw her in an exhibition routine on the vaults, her only event here tonight. Limited freshman year because of injury, but seeing here, uh, seeing her on floor. You talked about the leadoff spot in the beam. What does it mean to be in the leadoff spot here for the floor? And she stepped out. She did. That's a tenth right there for stepping out. Leading off on beam is a little bit different than any event, just because it is the one that most teams tend to struggle on more than others. But leading off on any event, you have to get your team going on the right foot. Front handspring, front layout, front full. And again, steps a out step again. out of bounds. That's going to be two tenths off of her final score. What but does she need to adjust to? Every in her floor routine? is different. I mean, it's always a spring floor. But some floors are very bouncy. Some floors are very stiff. So you have to figure out how to be patient and use the floor to work with your body and your gymnastics. Gearing up here for her last tumbling pass. Pull and a half to a front layout. Inbounds. Did it look like she was holding back or, or pulling back at all? being aware of the out of bounds on that last pass? I don't think so. I think you get used to the floor in warm ups. That's why you have a warm up is to get used to the equipment. Here's her first pass. Take another look. Sometimes you just get excited and go more powerful than than you're used to, but just overdoes it a little bit. And her final pass. Round off back handspring, full and a half. Toes a little bit crossed in the air, but nice front layout. Annette Mealy in the two slot here for Michigan. One of those all-arounders here for the Wolverines. Annette's very powerful on this event. She does a front aerial into a back handspring step out. That's her series. It's interesting you say she's very powerful because she's had to battle this lower back injury too. So how do you manage pain with someone who has a lower back injury on an event like this? Everybody's different. Coaches have to watch in practice how many reps she's doing. She might only do, you know, two routines per event. But if that's what works for her in order to keep her healthy, then that's all you need to do. She looked pretty healthy there. Nice Rudy dismount. You don't see those very often, and she stuck it. She stuck it, and her teammate Shelby Geist got a 9.85 before her, too, but take a look at this. This is the side aerial, a little balance check, but she's right on top. She knows she just needs to figure out how to control it and sticks the landing. Great two first routines for Michigan. 
A 9-8-5 for Shelby Geis as Annette Mealy will wait for her score. Serena Bombarger for Michigan State. One of two events for her. Jillian Carr recording a 9-3-5. That about what you would expect for her routine? A little bit on the low side, I would think. Two tenths off for the out of bounds, but all judges are different. Maybe they saw something that I didn't. Serena opens with a front tumbling pass, a front handspring front Rudy. Cool little jump move there. <laughs> cool. Coach Nicole Curler, who used to be on the Michigan State team, does all of the choreography for Michigan State. Nice double tuck. Pretty leap pass for Serena. This is more of an elegant routine. I was gonna say, music's different. Demeanor's different. How about that? That was different. <laughs> that was like a back handspring to her head, almost. <laughs> I know it's different when your eyes get wide <laughs> and look at me. Ends with a front full. Front layout just looked like her feet just slipped out from under her. She didn't rotate as much as she should have on that front layout. This is what you thought was different and cool. That can spring to her head. <laughs> and her final pass. That's the front full, front layout, and just when she landed, her feet were out in front of her. She, and she was didn't that, have anywhere she else was to go. She was that close to finishing, too. Bumbarger will wait for her score. Joanna Sampson now on the beam for Michigan. Her teammate, Annette Mealy, recording a 9825. So Geis with a 985, Mealy with a 9825. She's having a great year. She only did three events last year, but doing the all around this season. Coach says she's really put a lot of pressure on herself and told her she needs to relax, take it easy. Well, we talk about breakout gymnasts, and we talked about Katie Zorales being one, but Joanna Sampson has to be right up there as well in terms of breakout stories. Exactly. That was a nice back handspring layout step out from Joanna. Split three quarter. She almost looked right at me when she landed that. <laughs> Nice side aerial, very focused up there. She's taking her time, being patient with herself. And a gainer full dismount. Her changed teammates that, loved it. Change that dismount on me as well. She used to do a round off full and a half. Last year, that's what she competed. But the gainer full looked nice. She nailed it. Here's her flight series. Back handspring layout, step out. Perfectly square. And the dismount. Tricked ya! <laughs> nice routine <laughs> for Joanna. Bev's happy. I think everyone's happy with that routine. Yes. Heading over back to Michigan State on the floor. Ashley Knoll, the freshman. Bumbarger recorded an 8.975. That's in contrast to Jillian Carr's 9.35 when she stepped out of bounds. What do you think of that score? She did fall, so that is a little bit more of a deduction than just going out of bounds, but they are going to have to count that 9-3 as well now. Nice opening tumbling pass, double pike. Ashley Knoll, her coach says, has done a beautiful job as a freshman. One floor last weekend. Second tumbling pass is a front Rudy. Very pretty lines in the air with that pass. This is a little more graceful as well. 
We got country coming. <laughs> I can't wait. Not till the end of floor lineup. <laughs> Maybe I'm just used to Michigan's more hip hop routine. Here she is, her final pass. Front layout, front full. A little fidgeting with her feet there, but she landed it, she stayed on her feet, she stayed in bounds. First real hit routine on floor for Michigan State. Yeah, the Spartans needed a solid score. They will get a respectable one for Ashley Knoll. Hopefully they can build momentum off of this routine. Here's her first pass, the double pike. Nails it, she likes it. And her last pass. Front layout, front full. Just has to step to the side a little bit. But three solid tumbling passes. So Michigan State in a little bit of a better situation after the Knoll performance. Heading back to the bean, Katie Zorales following up a 9825 performance from Joanna Sampson. Katie has a short routine, but a difficult routine. You'll see this flight series right here. It's an aerial back handspring. You have to be perfectly centered. You know, I was watching her warm up and her coach was watching her and almost looked impressed. I was trying to read her facial expression. So we'll see how she performs here, but she liked her warm-up session at least. It always helps you compete better if you're warming up good. Katie went 9-9 last weekend. Feet jump into a sheep jump. She has a nice double full dismount that she's gearing up for. <laughs> You know what? She was having fun during that whole routine before she made her dismount. I thought she was smiling a little bit. They are on fire right now on beam. That was a beautiful routine from Katie. Everyone just keeps getting better than the last. Here's her flight series. That's the aerial back handspring, and she's straight on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and her dismount. It was there where I felt like she gave a little smile, and then she was smiling after that. It really pops, that dismount does. She knows when to open and nailed the landing. A 9.85, a 9.825, a 9.825. Those are the scores so far on the beam for Michigan. Going back to floor, Alyssa Brennan for Michigan State. Noel recording a 9.75 before her, and that's exactly what Michigan State needed. Let's see if Alyssa can capitalize on that score. Well, she tied a career high, a 9-8 against Alaska last weekend. So she knows she can do it. Starts off with a round off back handspring double pike. Ooh, she was close. She was close, but I don't <laughs> think she went out. She was close. I think I saw the chalk come off of the carpet a little bit, but stayed on her toes. Is this the Barbie Girl song? <laughs> You're liking this music a little bit more, huh? I am. Here's the double tuck for her second pass. Two dynamic first tumbling passes. Having a little fun out there. Team on the sideline is doing her dance moves with her. Here's up for her final tumbling pass. A whip half, front full, holds that landing position. And her team's got to be happy with that one. I would say so. Ashley Newell getting the 9.75 for Kathy Clegas' crew. Alyssa Brennan will wait on her score. Take a look at the first pass, where she was close to stepping out of bounds. Uh, wow. Yeah, she said she stays on her wow. toe. If she would have put that heel down. That was close. This is the whip half. Uses her arms to help her turn that around, and great routine. 
Sachi Sugiyama on the beam. An event that Michigan has been on fire tonight. Two girls left. One of them needs to hit in order to count five solid scores. Starts off with her back handspring layout, step out, slight knee bend on the layout. But she looks focused up there. Beautiful leap series. It's always more difficult to land sideways, like on that switch side she just did, than frontwards, or in my experience at least. <laughs> Pike jump into a back layout step out. Nails it. Sugiyama gearing up. Forward dismount. Ends with a round off double four. She was holding it. Holding it. I think they're practicing their sticks on their dismounts a lot. <laughs> because they are not moving their feet at all. Here's her back handspring layout, step out series. Slight knee bend in the back knee. She'll get deducted for. And here's the double full dismount. Barely moves one foot. <laughs> That's five solid beam routines. Michigan hasn't had to count a fall since February 17th. I didn't want to say that stat before beam rotation. And they don't have to this weekend as well. <laughs> Jackie Berg. Jackie Berg, a senior. Now, this is your buddy. So tell me her personality and, and what you look for here in her routine. She's a fun, girl. She likes to talk with everyone. She likes to have a good time. That's her personality and she's going to show it to you in this floor routine. She plays it up to the judges. That's Nicole Curler in the background. Used to do gymnastics at Michigan State. A first year assistant here for the Spartans. Nice front handspring front Rudy for Jackie. She looks like she plays to the crowd a little bit more. Exactly. She likes to dance. She likes to have fun. So. This is her event. Alyssa Brennan recording a 9.75. So back to back 9.75s here for Michigan State. So far so good here for Jackie Berg as well. And so the front full, front pike. Awesome three tumbling passes. Maybe you can Facebook her later and tell her that she did a good job. <laughs> Maybe I'll call her this time. <laughs> that was a fun routine, Jackie Burke. They're building off of each other right now. A little dance, a little fun. A little shoulder roll there. Had a smile on her face the whole time. She looks like she's having fun. Is her final pass? Front full, front pike a little bit to the side, but I don't think the judges noticed that. Well, she waits for her tally. Sugiyama recorded a career high as we look at Stephanie Colbert. Sugiyama getting a 9775. Steph last weekend was the first time she competed beam due to Brittany Martinez's absence. And she nailed it last weekend with a 9725, fighting right now to stay on the beam. So she's new to the beam scene. Well, Might have those nerves. Right, I was gonna say, how do you conquer that, especially on an event like beam? When you're new. The only way to conquer it is to get more competition experience. So after this routine, once she hits this routine, 
she'll have two solid Beamer teams that the next time going into Big Tens next weekend, she can say, hey, I nailed the last two weekends on beam. Woo! The Gainer Pike this one off the end of the beam. It always helps you mentally as well. Number two in the books here for Stephanie Colbert. Gainer pike dismount. A lot of girls do the gainer off the side of the beam. She does it off of the end of the beam. And that was six for six beamer teens for Michigan. Some amazing scores there for the Wolverines. Danny Levy will wrap things up here for Michigan State. This is what I've been waiting for. Country music, play it. Here she goes. And the reason being, coach says she gets to use a little flex feet. She's not the most graceful gymnast. And with this floor music, she can use flex feet and she can be more jumpy and doesn't have to be that graceful gymnast. She did say that, that she is Michigan State's strongest tumbler. But here we go. Starts off with a huge Arabian double front. Ooh. Nails it. Stays inbounds, uses the bouncy floor to her advantage. Jackie Berg before her recording a 9.775. So Michigan State looking for its fourth straight solid score. Front full, tuck front. Every routine needs to have a combination tumbling pass like that, which means one flip right into the other. Things don't bother her, her coach says. She prepares for the final pass. Ends with a two and a half twist. Pretends like she has a country hat on in that final pose. <laughs> Dancing in your country boots. Here's her first pass. Arabian double front and just takes that one step that you are allowed out of the tumbling pass. Her final pass. We see the two and a half twist. Chest a little bit low on the landing, but she picks it up right away. And that is the Spartans only all around competitor. Michigan now completed on the beam. They do not have an exhibition routine. Stephanie Colbert wrapped things up with a 9-6-2-5. And that'll wrap things up here in the third rotation. Coming up next, Michigan State will head to beam. Michigan will go to floor. One more rotation to go, plus a chat with the Wolverine head coach coming up. BTN Women's Gymnastics is brought to you by Alpha Factor. Compete with confidence. There's the Union Building there on campus. And joining us now, graciously, is Michigan head coach, Bev Plocky. And coach, you had a couple of career highs there on the beam. Really, really solid routine. Put into words for me what you watched your gymnasts do. Well, I was really proud of them. Um, you know, this is an important meet for us and we really have to hit and to go up there and be that aggressive is something that we've been trying to do all season. So I was really proud of them and re really happy. Bev, what do you need to accomplish here on floor for tonight's meet to be a successful one with big tens in mind next weekend? You know, we have to go out and show off our floor routines, um, you know, obviously land our tumbling passes, but we have to have fun out there, be entertaining and um, close out this meet. You talk about, how do you feel like your gymnasts have performed when you talked about how important this meet is and looking ahead to what you guys want to accomplish, you want to get to that evening session next weekend for the Big Ten Championships? Right, you know, um, we have a very young team. We've had our inconsistencies this season, but I think 
that we really have learned and, and grown from every competition. And I'm just really hoping that we finish this out, put it together tonight, that we'll be able to be fortunate enough to qualify into that evening session and then have the confidence going into the Big Ten Championship that we can put a full meet together. Okay, Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Good Thank luck you. in the fourth rotation. Thanks. And our results, Michigan on the beam. I mean, man, look at those scores. They nailed them. They were on fire tonight on beam. One after another, they just used each other's routines to help them get through. Geis and Sugiyama, their scores were career highs on that event. We look at the floor results when Michigan State, the first two competitors didn't really get the scores that the Spartans wanted, but finishing strong there for Michigan State. And there you look at your totals so far here through three rotations with one left to compete in. What did you think of Coach's thoughts about uh, the way her gymnasts are performing under the pressure, a pressure that they've really put on themselves to get into that evening session next weekend. I think it's good to have that pressure. They're using it to motivate them this evening. And she's right. She's being positive. It's, it would be more fun to be in that evening session. But if, even if they're in the early session, they're going to do as best as they can. and try to put a meet together anyways. Let's flip it real quick to Michigan State. Four of the last five meets they recorded in the 195s. What have you seen from them that maybe they're struggling with here tonight? They have four seniors that have been leading them this season so far. They have new coaches this year, Coach Mo and Nicole Curler that has put a little new spin on this season. Hopefully they can finish up the meet strong on beam. Well, Coach Klegas will watch Danny Levy, a person who we talked about, and she said the grace and support of the sport does not come easy to her. How does that affect her on the beam? Answer that in just a second. As we look, she is one of the all-arounder competitors here. And there is an update. The top three scores here, Michigan gymnasts. But answer my question now. When you have trouble with the grace and the beauty of the sport, like your coach says, what does she need to adjust to here on this event? It's no adjusting. Every gymnast is different. Like we saw Shelby on beam last rotation, she's very graceful, very flowy and pretty lined. Danny's just a more powerful gymnast, and she uses it to her advantage. I was more of a powerful gymnast as well. What can we look forward to in this routine then that will accentuate that power? for her. Her dismount. I like her dismount. It starts off with the leap series, switch leap, pike jump. You got this, Dad. Gearing up for a punch front, I believe. That's a power skill for you, but she's a little off center. Has to take the fall. What did you see there that created her to become off center? You know, I'm on the side of the beam. I didn't have that direct view. But sometimes when you punch your sh and your shoulders are a little uneven or your feet are a little off, beam's only four inches. There's not much error you can work with. And they switch side. Let's go, Danny! Danny had won the all around really the last four times she had competed in it this year. You got it, Danny! Here's that dismount you like. That handspring layout step out to a full. It's her flight series connected into her dismount. Sticks the dismount, makes up for the. See on air. this angle if you can tell about her fall. Just looked like her shoulders were a little uneven when she took off. That handspring layout step out, doesn't move her feet. And this plays to her power. Yes, there's definitely power in the back handspring layout. Any flight series, I think there's a definite power. Sachi Sugiyama, her final event. Here tonight. 
thought she had some difficulty in her routine. Where is the difficulty? Where can we look to find that? Throughout the whole thing, but first tumbling pass, you'll see two and a half twist. Here it comes. Nails it, has to take a little larger step than she would like to out of it, but look good to me. They also only put up five people last weekend on this event as well. They actually tied a season high as a team only putting up five gymnasts. They did. I mean, this is a team that is focused. Well, they know they don't have the girls. Bev says, if you're healthy and you can compete in an event, pretty much you're competing. Sugiyama, one of those that probably would not be competing in the all-around, but she is uh, stepping up here as a freshman. Really had an impact year this year. Ends with a nice double pike. Awesome first routine for Michigan. Get things rolling here on the floor. Home crowd likes it. Having a good old time out there. Dive forward roll. <laughs> Adds a little flair to the routine. And we see the double pike, nice set, nice body position in the air, knows where she is and opens up at the right time. And the place like that. Tara Neal up next here for Michigan State. Her teammate Danny Levy recording a 9-1-5 after that fall leading off things here for the Spartans. Like we talked about earlier, the leadoff spot on beam, very important. Hopefully she can work through that, get her team on the right pace again. Well, Neil has had to work through a lot of injuries. Her coach telling us this week that she had two or three elbow surgeries. The doctors even thought that she should be medically disqualified after her freshman year. She didn't want to hang it up. She wanted to have surgery, and here she is competing as a red shirt sophomore. And good for her when your heart's in the sport. Keep, keep on trucking. We just saw a nice punch front from her. She had a little balance check. Split three quarter. Looks like she's talking herself through it up there. And here's the dismount, back handspring, layout, step out, <laughs> full. Trying to hold it. Same dismount as Danny. The flight series into the dismount element. Here's her punch front. A little balance check, but. Here's that dismount. Nice straight legs in the back handspring back layout. Chest a little bit forward when she lands, has to take that little hop forwards, but stayed on, hopefully changing the momentum for the beam team right now. That's the last of three events for Tara Neal. Going back over to four, Stephanie Colbert. Sugiyama recording a 9-7 before her. Stephanie gets her choreography done by one of my old coaches in Illinois. Punch front to a double pike. Opened up early, had to take a step forward. I don't think she touched her knee. She can actually do a double layout, which she has competed before. Very difficult tumbling pass. Maybe they're just going Going easier this weekend. They need to put up big score, go with the simple routine. Her coach said that she struggled early on the floor early this season. How has she matured in your mind on this event? 
Like we talked about on beam for her as well, she's getting that experience. She's been in the floor lineup all season long. So she has more experience and it definitely helps build your confidence. Colbert, just a sophomore. Her team knows her routine well. <laughs> They're missing Natalie Bielstein's powerhouse routine. Powerhouse. She's an All-American on floor, and they are without her. Ends with a sky-high double tap. Stephanie Colbert wrapping up her night. This is the first tumbling pass. Punch front to a back handspring, double pike. Let's go of her legs a little bit early, making her take that step forward. And here we see the double tap. There's Natalie in a boot. Ugh, she was one of those where you said, hey, there's the Achilles, there's the ACL, there's the ankle injury. That's the Achilles right there. I did some rehab exercises with her when I, I got saw that. here. She got you involved. Helping her out. Natalie Bielstein, likely going to medical at red shirt after the Achilles issue. Going back over to the beam, Alex Pace. Stephanie Colbert just recording a 975. Alex Pace is sophomore, coming off a 9725 routine by Tara Neal. Alex went 99 last weekend in Alaska. Let's see if she can. What kind of routine can we expect? With a 99 last weekend, I'm sure she nailed it. She does a nice back handspring, back layout, step out for a series. She's just very focused up there. You can see in her face, very determined. Oh, she hung on. She hung on. She had to fight for it, but she stayed up there, knowing that the first gymnast fell, that's in the back of your mind. Fight for every tenth that you can. Want to update Tara Neal's score actually better at a 9775. Cat leap into a switch side, flawless, lands nicely sideways on the beam. Very nice side aerial. And there's that required full turn that every gymnast has to do. All she has left here is the dismount, I believe. Round off, full and a half dismount, sits it down. She just doesn't rotate as much as she should. Another fall for Michigan State. So we have a fall and a, and a serious kind of balance check here. Here's the series. She looks straight on, but when she picks her head up, she lets her shoulders drop. And what went wrong with the dismount? Just didn't rotate the flip all the way around. Your body should be straight up and down when you're landing. Her feet are out in front of her. Her shoulders are behind her, and she just has to. There's nowhere else she can go but to sit down. Annette Mealy up next. Another gymnast kind of inserted into the floor here because of injuries. A fun routine from Annette. Interesting, she only has two tumbling passes. And what does that mean? She still starts from a 10. She uses her dance combination and her leaps to build that bonus. What is the advantage for her of having two tumbling passes versus three? It's not really an advantage. Some judges might look at it as, well, why didn't she do three? It might almost be a disadvantage, but she's still scoring in the same caliber as everybody else on the floor, floor team, so she can nail her two tumbling passes like I've seen her do. 
stick with the two and use dance combinations like that to get your bonus to start you from a 10.0. So gymnast has been dealing with pain in her lower back. You wouldn't know it by looking at her face. Looks like she's having a good time. Sure does. Here's her second full and a half punch front layout. And neither of these passes did I see a, a major deduction on. We'll have to wait for the judges to decide. You're not the final decision? I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Great routine from Annette. Neely's first pass, take another look. I guess you only have two to decide from. Back handspring, big set, pointed toes, doesn't move that front foot. That's what's important. Her second and final pass. Full and a half, front layout. And she nailed everything in that routine. Going back to the beam here, Jackie Berg. Again, Kylie, you know her well. What is going through her mind in your best estimate when you have three gymnasts, two of them recording really nine ones, Alex Pace getting a nine one before her here on the beam? When there's two falls before you at this point, it's just do the routine you know how to do. You can't put so much pressure on you, but Jackie has a very difficult series right here. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, step out. It's a triple series. A little balance check, but she's been doing this for years and hopefully is just saying positive thoughts in her head and not thinking about those two falls before her. She's this top Spartan on the beam last year. Certainly capable of putting up big numbers. Switch leap into a straddle corner. She looks poised up there. She's controlling herself. Preparing for her dismount. Cartwheel, gain her full. Had to take a slight hop on the landing, but she stayed on. Another routine. They can always rely on Jackie. Here's that difficult flight series. Flip flop, flip flop, layout. A little leg swing she had to do to keep her balance. And the cartwheel gainer full. Nice routine for Jackie. So Berg will wait on her score. Meanwhile, we head over and... <laughs> Katie Zorales is up next. Last weekend, the first time on the floor in three years. What is her challenge here? Like I said, she's just battling, she's been battling injuries her whole career. I don't think she's done all around this much since her club career in high school. That was an impressive first pass. Here she comes for her second. Full and a half, punch front layout. Both elements very high and in very nice form. You said she had what surgeries in the summer? <laughs> she had her hip <laughs> and her shoulder done. Quick recovery. It is National Athletic Training Month that it this is. March. Our trainer, Lisa, works wonders. I would not have made it through a healthy four years without her. I really do have to thank her for all her time spent with me. Lisa Haas, when we talked to her and I said, has this been a fun year with you, for you with all these injuries? And she said, you know what? It's job security. <laughs> <laughs> front full, front layout. Nails her third tumbling pass, just like the first two in front of it. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I said the beginning of this meet, Michigan needs to be on their game tonight if they want to put up that big score to get into the evening session and they know how to get it done when the pressure's on. Full and a half, 
punch front. And here's her third tumbling pass. Front full, front layout. She just has a great body position in her front tumbling. <laughs> Look at the fan who's doing it with her. That's great. Maybe she'll be a Michigan gymnast someday. <laughs> What's your score for her? For the fan? Let's give her a 10. All right. First 10 of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Knoll, the freshman. This is her third event here for Michigan State. Zoralis getting a 9-9. A career high for Katie Zoralis. Ashley is one of the more graceful theme workers. That's her flight series, that handspring layout step out. Everything looked good in the air. Her body looked good, just must not have been square from the beginning. How tough was it in that point to fight your balance in a situation like that? Sometimes you can fight as hard as you want and there's nothing you can do. You just have to let it happen, get back on and finish up your routine. Jackie Bird before her getting a 9.65. So two solid scores here for Michigan State on this event. Tara Neal with a 9.775. She didn't get to finish her dismount like she should have. Something happened there with her cartwheel. Here's her back handspring layout. Just looks like she's off the side. My advice to her, bend your knees. And that's the aerial supposed to go into a full dismount. So it's she won't get credit for that. It I was going to say, OK, how do the judges handle that? It won't be a 10 start value. Joanna Sampson next for Michigan on the floor. Katie's 9-9 is really leading up for Joanna and Rima to come. They are just going to use that score to really help them in these routines. Does that, does that really work when you are on a team? Oh yeah, and, if and the judges watch? just saw Katie's routine and she went 9-9 nine, nine, and Joanna are, and Rima are after her and they have just as good of routines or better as Katie did, they have nowhere to go but up. That uh -oh. was a huge half in, <laughs> half out. First tumbling pass for Joanna. How many points does she get for that neck move? <laughs> <laughs> you do get some creativity. <laughs> the little style. Points, little you flair. do. See, right likes... away you can see she's a powerful floor routine. That is an upgraded pass for Joanna. She likes to have fun out there. Front full, front layout. Joanna took second on floor at Big Tens last year on this event. Has some experience. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen even the crowd kind of get into it a little bit. We're gearing up for her last pass. Ends with a double pike. Opens up a little early. Has to take a step forward. You should usually be taking a step backward out of your backwards tumbling. Joanna Sampson, a powerful routine. Coach says she puts the pressure on herself. Here's her first pass, half in, half out. That's a full twisting double back, very difficult move. Her final pass. What kind of nice height? Set, nice height, just opens tad early and has to take that step forward. Almost looks like she's doing the Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Bumbarger for Michigan State. Serena Bumbarger. We're still waiting on Ashley Knowles score, which is the reason for the delay. Maybe some. Next up on the balance beam for Michigan State, Serena Bumbarger. 
Joanna Sampson recording a 9.85, just there on the floor. Serena shows her flexibility there in that opening element. Nice scale. Still working on the Ashley Knoll score, even though Bumbarger has begun her routine. Has that same difficulty series that Jackie Bird did, the back handspring, back handspring layout, step out and just a little off. It's the domino effect, Lisa. Sometimes the that other just way. happens. On beam more so than other events, but. How do you get that out of your head when you know that your teammates have fallen during this routine? What was your, what was your strategy? For some, it's easier than others. I didn't like to watch the girls before me. Even if I knew that somebody fell, I competed the same. I wanted to do the same routine every time, no matter what the situation was. Nice sheep jump. She has really pretty lines on this event. Gainer, pike, stump dismount. Finishes strong, Serena Bumbarger. Here's the difficult flight series. Flip flop, flip flop, layout. Fights a little bit, has to hop off the side. Here's that gainer pike. The stick dis stuck dismount makes up for it a little bit. Yeah, but not the beam performance that Michigan State was hoping for. Not what head coach Kathy Clegas was hoping for, certainly. Rima Zachariah will finish things off here for Michigan in the anchor spot. Four is her main event. What is going to be fun about this? Everything, Lisa. This <laughs> wow. is an awesome routine to watch. She does her own choreography on this floor routine. She loves to dance. She does her own. She does. The two routines I actually made up for the Wolverines are injured today. <laughs> Natalie and Kristen, I did both of their choreography. Wow. Huge double front. Awesome opening pass for Rima. And there's more to come. And she's got that big smile to match this big routine. A little salsa. Rima's from Miami. Front full, front layout, nails it. Her mom is actually in town from Florida this weekend. <laughs> Skip. Oh, she's getting this building into it. Skipped out on lunch with me today to hang out with her mother. And I oh. said, I understand. Don't <laughs> worry. Final tumbling pass for Rima. And she's playing to the crowd. I love it. Oh. And... Not exactly sure what happened with that last pass. She opened up early. Well, a fun routine indeed. Got a little bit ahead of herself. Here's her first tumbling pass. Very unique tumbling pass, a front double front. A lot of people do the double flips backwards. And here's her front full, front layout. Nailed the first two passes, just like she knows how. Here's the end. She would probably like that back, oof. On that taped up ankle too. Mom's reaction? Probably just hoping that she wasn't injured You're on right. that tumbling pass. Looked right. like she had a little, looked like a tough fall. little whiplash maybe. Zachariah will wait on her score. We're joining Alina Cartwright, who is the exhibition participant here for Michigan State. A couple of scores of her teammates, Ashley Knoll getting the 7975. Serena Bumbarger getting a 92. This is one of the gymnasts Coach Kathy was talking about 
had hoped her to be in that all around spot this year, but due to injuries, hasn't happened. If she has a good routine, Clegas would probably like to use it, but yeah, she can't. Yeah, possibly next weekend at the Big Ten Championships. She said they're hoping to get her in the floor lineup next weekend at Big Tens and make that floor lineup a little bit stronger. So Zachariah gets a 9-1-7-5 on the floor as we watch Cartwright wrap up her exhibition routine. So four rotations down. And we will wrap things up when we return. As the coaches wrap things up with their teams, we'll have a little chat when we come back. Outside in Ann Arbor, the Ross School of Business. Comfortable evening outside, feels like maybe even May instead of March. Here are your results. Michigan State on the beam, certainly not a performance that the Spartans would like, but solid performances there for Neil and Burke, Kylie. Like I said earlier, it just seemed like it was the domino effect. Not getting the, the scores that Michigan State would want. On the flip side, Michigan again solid there on the floor. All the way through, they didn't have to count Rima's little mistake there, but all together. That was Zoralis, a career high, that 9-9 you were looking at. There's your team scores here after the night is done. Look closely at that Michigan score, 196. The Wolverines know that they have to hit a certain score here to possibly get in the top four for next weekend in the Big Ten Championships, which lead us to a conversation with the Wolverine head coach, Bev Blocky. And coach, thanks for joining us. And destiny is now out of your hands. But how closely did this team perform to the way you wanted them to perform here tonight? You know, I thought that they competed a lot more relaxed. Um, They're competing a lot more aggressively. We did really well on beam tonight, but we're still making, you know, little mistakes that are costing us that very valuable tents. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have an opportunity and we'll be fortunate to uh, be able to qualify into the evening session. If not, we'll do the best job that we can in the afternoon. And, um, you know, we just need to, you know, cut out those little mistakes and put together a full meet. Bev, talk about Katie. She's been doing awesome, one all around last two weekends. How is that helping Michigan and the team's confidence going into next weekend? You know, I think it's great. And Katie has had a lot of injuries um, in the past couple of years. And so this is the first year she's done the all around in a very, very long time. And it took her, you know, the better part of the season to really, I think, feel comfortable in that role and go out there and, and be strong on all four events. And so hopefully, you know, we're peaking at the right time with her. Coach, thanks. Do you wait up and, and see what Minnesota does on Saturday? You sit there by the computer and hit the refresh button? Absolutely. <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Here's the all-around results. Solid there for Michigan, finishing in the top three. Katie Zorales winning the all-around. Katie Zorales, look at her work here tonight. The Alpha Factor athlete. Very night. dynamic, all-around, stuck most of her dismounts. Nailed a final floor routine. Katie was on fire tonight, leading the way for Michigan. Final thoughts here as we wrap it up. We have the Big Ten Championships right around the corner. Your final thoughts, Kylie? It's going to be an exciting day. It doesn't matter who's in the afternoon and who's in the evening. It's going to be a lot of gymnastics. And hopefully everybody does the best they can. and. Whoever's supposed to win will come out on top. We'll bring you the two sessions. Both will be live from Iowa City, but for right now, it's Michigan 
over its rival Michigan State. Remember, again, Saturday, March 24th, have the 2012 Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships at 2 p.m. and at 7 Eastern. For Kylie Caloric, I'm Lisa Byington. So long now from Ann Arbor. The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network.